Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, December 29th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. January 11th was supposed to be originally a fairly critical date for old Android operating systems and Let's Encrypt. Historically, Let's Encrypt did not have its own root certificate authority. Instead, they used a certificate authority based on IDEN Trust. Now, more recently, they used their own root certificate, but then also had it still cross-signed with IDENT Trust. And the reason for that was that not all operating systems yet recognized Let's Encrypt's own certificate authority. Well, this was supposed to change come January 11th, at which point the original IDEN Trust Certificate Authority expired and going forward, uh, Let's Encrypt was no longer going to use IDEN Trust, but only Let's Encrypt. Problem, well, older Android versions did not include the Let's Encrypt set of authority, and as a result, they would no longer trust any Let's Encrypt certificate issued after January 11th. Well, we're talking about Android versions that are quite old, uh, pretty much anything prior to 7.1.1. Uh, it still affected a significant uh, percentage of uh, the user population. So what's actually going to happen now on January 11th is that Let's Encrypt will continue to use the expired Ident Trust set of authority in addition to its own. Now, you may ask, uh, how can this work uh, if Ident Trust uh, is expired? Well, it turns out that Android actually ignores uh, the expiration for set of authorities that are implicitly trusted. So uh, this will still keep uh, the older Android versions in business. And of course, newer ones will just ignore uh, the Ident Trust one and then use uh, the uh, self-signed set of authority that's now included as an anchor in Android and other operating systems. This new arrangement will stay in place until 2024 when uh, this expires. So let's hope by then uh, people upgrade it from Android 7.1.1. For any user, this entire process should really be transparent. If you are developing Acme clients and such, uh, then uh, you may want to read up a little bit on the details. And last year, Microsoft patched a local privilege escalation bug CVE 2020-0986 in Windows 8.1 and Windows 10. This affected the print spooler API, but sadly looks like the patch wasn't complete. The original patch was released in June. In September, Google uh, did notify Microsoft that the patch was not effective. And well, since uh, the 90 day deadline expired now, Google went public with details and proof of concept code. And yes, uh, this vulnerability has been exploited in the wild. And well, uh, Google, of course, sometimes has vulnerabilities as well. Latest vulnerability in Google Docs. And we have some details about this now uh, after a bug bounty was paid out and the vulnerability was uh, fixed. In this case, it was possible to exfiltrate a screenshot of a Google Docs document if a user clicked on the feedback option. So there were quite a bit of dependencies here, but essentially the way the exploit worked was that the document would load a malicious iframe that would then try to intercept these messages, kind of a click jacking in part, but then also uh, insecure cross origin issues that are being exploited here. Uh, pretty in neat exploit and vulnerability. So if you're working on modern web applications, certainly worth reading up on this problem. And as every year around New Year, uh, this year we also have a Chaos Communication Congress 
in Germany. Uh, this is uh, probably one of uh, the biggest and best uh, European uh, security events uh, that happens each year and every time around this time of the year. Now, they have uh, been uh, very good about streaming their content in the past, but of course, this year it will be all online. Some of the talks are in German, but there are also plenty of talks in English. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.